And good morning everybody. It's Saturday and it's going to be a crazy day. Let's look what's going on. First up, we've got a fresh arrival. 1955, six or seven, I'm not sure exactly what year it is. Chevy, she's a rust bucket deluxe, but she's got really good color for wall art. Next up on the list, Skyler just dropped off a 47 Chevy. Two door coupe. This is the parts car for the better one. I'll show it to you guys in a minute. He brought it yesterday. Yeah, I think it's a 47. Ow, I just hit the bumper guard with my shin. Yeah, it's a 47. Yeah, I just caught that with my shin. That did not feel good. What's kind of interesting about this car here is that somebody did a five lug conversion on the front. Not the back, just the front. But it's really, really rusty. It's really a rusty piece of junk, but it has lots of good trim on it. The rear fenders aren't too bad. The other one is missing the deck lid. So this one has a workable deck lid. It's a little bit rusty at the bottom. But yeah, everything the other one needs, this one has. So between the two of them, guy could put them together and make a pretty decent car. This old truck here is definitely just going to be wall art. I mean, it is rotted bad. Look at that. That is just horrible rot. Extremely rusty. But it's got good dash parts in it. It's got a good steering wheel. Shockingly, the roof is not bad. It's got a little bit of rust up there, but not nearly as bad as they usually are. And it's not beat up anywhere. The back of the cab's perfect. So I think this is a good candidate here to chop the roof off of for somebody to swap out a roof because usually they're not this rusty in the bottom on these farm trucks and the roofs are what's rotted out. So this in here will be good for the person that has a good bottom end but needs a top end. We pop the hood on it. It's got a 261 under the hood, still turns good. So that'll be a good property. So uh, yeah, there's some good, good value here for wall art and for parts and that sort of stuff. It's kind of unfortunate. But then another issue with this thing here is that it's been tagged as an antique in the state of Kansas. And if something's been tagged as an antique, you cannot get an, another antique title for it. You used to be able to just go down and get an antique title for these. But they changed the law now to where if it's been tagged once as an antique, you have to find the last registered owner and they have to file for a lost title. You can't do it a second time. So, And this truck here has transferred hands several times since the last person that registered it. So there's just no way of getting a title to this at this point in time unless you want to do the whole, I think it's Vermont thing or whatever. Or if it goes out of state, then it would be no issue. But as far as me, I can't get a title for this. Sean's driving in now. We got a 60 something another GMC out back. I think it's a 68. Gonna go back there and chop the nose off of it. Here we go. Oh, 
there she is. I didn't realize it was a five window when he told me about it. This wasn't too far away on Craigslist and I didn't have time to go get it. So he brought me that other old red and white Chevy this morning and he went down and grabbed it for me real quick. Not too bad of a truck really. I mainly just want the nose off of this one. It's got a good looking job rated nose on it. That make a really good wall hanger there. And then the cab really isn't that bad a condition. It's a five window cab. So uh, I think might be able to pull this cab. Although Dodge cabs never seem to sell very good. I've got a really nice Dodge cab back at the other yard and never really had much interest in it. It's got a fancy seat in it. These trucks just never really have come into their own. But yeah, there's rock solid floors in this thing. The roof's not all beat in. Cab corners are good, doors are good. I think this one's nice enough that if I can find that one person out there that does like Dodges, I think I can talk them into this one here. It's got the original flathead under the hood. Still turns. He said it did still start up until the rats ate the plug wires off of it. Huh, I don't know. Same guy said he has another cab just like this, but there's no doors on it. But it's a five window cab and then he's got a late 50s Chevy truck cab and bed, short bed, and some fenders and some other stuff. And he has a K5 Blazer frame that he was gonna put it all together and make one, but never got around to it. But he, I, I looked at pictures of it and it's, it's pretty rough. The cab almost looks like it's been burned. So I'm not too interested in it. And there's no front clip, complete front clip. So I can't even make a wall hanger out of it. And here it is. I guess he's gonna be making an entertainment center out of it. It'd be pretty neat when it's done. He's gonna fix the rust that's in it. He'll probably even paint it. Make it look a little bit nicer. Definitely a cool piece, that's for sure. I set this truck out for Sean. He's going to work on starting the process of getting the cabin front clip off of that. I've got to run to the other yard and get a hood out real quick. There we go, got him loaded up. He just bought a hood off of an old truck. It was an early 60s Chevy. Kind of a bad deal. I saved it for a guy a while back and uh, he said he had to have it. So I pulled it off, had it sitting by the gate and it's been sitting there all this time and he wouldn't come get it. And I saw him here about, about three weeks ago. He was right outside of town. He's from out of town. So I get why he didn't come right away. But I saw him and I said, hey man, you're right close to town. You wanna come get that hood? And he said, oh, not today. I'll get it, I'll get it this week. And that week came and went, never saw him. This guy was here getting the nose out that GMC and he said, I need a hood for a early 60s Chevy truck. And I said, I've got one, pretty good hood. And we worked out a price and he ran over there and grabbed it. So <laughs> it's gone now. Now the proper way to remove these pedals is one person runs the torch, the other person hops inside and you just push it down a little ways, that way it gets it away from the body then you yep. can cut it. Just like that. And there we go, they're both cut. I cut the throttle linkage and then we just whiz wheel through the steering wheel. Steering column I should say. This cab mount did not want to cooperate. This is from the top side. Normally a three quarter fits them good, but the bolt was so stripped out it wasn't working. So we put an 18 on there and we hammered it on there till it was on and it started unscrewing and then it just snapped the bolt off. Yes. Next up on the chopping block is this camera it's a 56 or a 57. One of the two, I already gave him the title, so now I can't remember. This is another one headed out east. It's got a really, really, really nice cab and the doors are junk, but they do match the, cab, the rest of the cab and then it's got a decent front clip on it. So he's buying the cab and the front clip. This thing is clear full of grain, so it is very heavy, not clear full. It actually doesn't have that much in there, but it's all wet and it's very heavy. So I had a hard time getting this up here. I had to drive slow. This is the one that's got the running driving 348 in it. 
That is sold to another guy. We're gonna leave that in there for now. He's supposed to be here on Monday to get it so he can unbolt it on his own. He didn't pay extra to unbolt it. So <laughs> we're just gonna get the cabin front clip off of here. These cab mount bolts come out pretty easy. Usually what you do is you just clean out the dirt around them like this, the rat nest, just take a screwdriver stick in there, get it clean out enough to get an impact on it. One person puts a wrench, one person puts an impact, come right out of there. Doing it by yourself, you could probably do it, but it's just a lot easier with two. Just about done with it. One more mirror and she's good to go. My camera died on Saturday, we didn't get a whole lot more done, but we're back out here Monday morning. We're gonna load up a load of cabs and that Corvair van. Typical junker, passenger seat's clear full of tools. So I'm riding in the back of the truck. Even my real nice Chevy that I drive, passenger seat's clear full of tools. The old Chevy, it's been full of tools for years. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ridden the passenger seat of that truck in a long time. And here it is, I just now realized, I've never showed you guys this van. This popped up on Marketplace a while back. Lady had it on there, said she needed to move it quick. There's no motor in it, no transmission. These are a rear engine, but there's no rust either. It's got some dents, got some body damage, but it's pretty clean inside. A lot of the interior is gone, but what I was gonna do with this, well, actually I'm not gonna tell you what I was gonna do with this because I'll find another van and do that later and I don't wanna spoil the surprise but it was not a good fate. It would have been a bad deal for this thing. But that didn't work out, he wants to buy it. So uh, I'm glad to see it go to a good home, so I'll have to find another one to do my idea with. Here we go. A little bit low in air, or a whole lot low. Looks like it probably has about three pounds in it. There we go, that'll get it. There we go. I've never picked this one up with a loader, so we didn't want to do it this time. So we're just gonna winch it on there the right way. There we go. All loaded up. We got the old 348 cab on the front. They got this old cab here, cabin clip. That cab he bought quite a while back actually, but he got it picked up. Decided to buy that bed today. The old 46 Ford cab, I cut that one off last spring. And that Corvair van. He's just gonna haul it home like that. He'll put a safety chain on it, but it's good to go. It's got a five speed in it. I didn't realize that when we first got the truck. It just got a Clark five speed in it. So that might be something. Now that Terry's leaving, next up on the list is we got this old 49 International here. I sold this as well. The guy doesn't want the box on it though. So we're gonna get the box chopped off of this, get the drive shaft taken out, get it ready to roll. That way they can come get that probably tomorrow or the next day I'm guessing. I tell you what, it must be Monday. Just got this load of signs in. I've had so much stuff going on, I'll tell you about it in a minute. So we were back here working on this international. I had a guy from Nebraska here that I've been friends with on Facebook for a while and I haven't talked to him yet in person. He came out here, he went to my dad's yard and bought a short bed and I think 81 or 82 GMC truck that he had. And he came out here to see me and he bought those aluminum intakes from me. And I talked to him for a while and I was walking around showing him the place, see if there's anything else he's interested in. And then another guy came out and he said he was looking for some parts off the bus I had just got. And I said, I haven't gotten a bus. And he says, no, the one you just got. I said, I have not gotten a bus lately. It's been a while. I said, I got some antique buses here a month ago, but that's it. 
And he said, no, the one you just got, I need some parts off of it. And I said, man, I don't have one. I did not get one. And he's like, whatever. And he walks off. And so he was all mad at me. I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. I haven't just got a bus. I come back out back here to check on Sean and this international. And that bus is sitting over there. I have no clue where that came from. They actually moved all of my junkyard campfire stuff and everything out of the way and drove it up in there next to my junkyard cabin. I have no clue where it came from, who brought it. They must have brought it while I was talking to that other guy, showing him around the place. <laughs> so I didn't know we had a bus, but uh, come to find out, we did have a bus. There we go, bed came right off of it, no problem. I love these doors on this thing. Cans of something or other, must have been an old state truck of some sort. Really cool old truck, KB7, you just don't see the big ones very often. It took me a while to sell it, it took me about a year to sell it, but that's okay. I was pretty firm on my price and I got my price eventually. The cab's a little bit messed up or else I think it would have sold a lot sooner. Because there's no rust in it and it's a complete truck, just other than that mangled up top up there. But he's been looking for one for a while, and this is exactly what he wanted, so he's pretty happy with it. Next up on the chopping block is this rusty old burnt 57 that I bought. Pretty rough car, but it's got a good rear end under it. The frame has just a tiny bit of rust, but it's not too bad, so we'll probably go ahead and pop the body off the frame. And at some point in the future, I'll chop the, chop the trunk section off of it. But uh, for now, we're just going to get the rear end out of it and then pull the frame off the body. That way I can try to get it sold. Boom. There we go, it kind of fell apart a little bit. I'll throw that seat in the scrap here in a minute. But here's the frame. It's got just a tiny bit of rust back at the back of it. I think it'd sell pretty good. The front half of the frame, or the front end of the frame anyway, never did get burnt. So if somebody needed A-arms or suspension parts, a gearbox, anything like that, there's a lot of good parts there. So I think a guy can get a couple hundred bucks out of that frame. And now for the back half of this car, we're just gonna cut it right across the roof real quick. Now this whole back section will just fall off and somebody else can cut it down further if they want it cut down further. That makes somebody a cool flower planter, basis for a couch or something, I don't know. They'll figure something out on it.
go. Look at the drive shaft out of that car. I mean, it looks like it exploded. I've never seen a drive shaft do that before. If you know what would cause that, let me know. It doesn't look like a torque rupture, like it would blow up from torquing it. It looks like it literally blew up, but I've never heard of a drive shaft blowing up like that. So, I mean, do they do that? Here's the, the head off of it. So, I don't know what happened there. Okay, we are done for the day, I think. Almost. I'm going to walk around and film a little bit, tell you guys about a few more vehicles that are out here. We pulled off three engines. Two of them are really crusty and rusty. And they're not that bad. I don't know what they are inside, but they don't turn. But they are mostly complete. But I was looking at an auction, an online auction, and I've been thinking about selling stuff with them for a while. If you guys watch my videos, you've heard me talk about it before. I just never have time to dig out the small stuff and put it on pallets. Well, there was an auction they were selling engines on pallets. Just one engine on one pallet. And I'm talking rusty stuff that looks like it came out of a river nasty crusty engines like a v8 ford flathead stuff like that hasn't even turned in probably 50 years i mean i'm talking the rustiest engines you've ever seen i don't know if there's anything usable on them and they were selling for two and three hundred bucks a piece blew me away i was just going to scrap those two engines and i thought you know what i'm going to slap those on a pallet and i've got a bunch more out of these old farm trucks that i was going to scrap the ones that still turn i always save but i had some more that don't turn i was going to scrap them but i thought man i'll slap them on a pallet and if i can even get a hundred bucks a piece that's more than scrap value, and they're super easy to pull once the cab and front clip are off, just a few bolts. So, pull those off. Sean did take one 235 that was the one out of that big window truck I sold a while back. A lot of times what I do is when there's an engine like that, that's a very clean engine. Probably runs, very clean oil, turns over good. Uh, he's going to take that home. I just give it to him for helping me out so much. And then he took the rear end out of that 57 Chevy. I forgot to tell him before he left, but I'll message him and tell him he can just have that too. He already has it sold, and he can just have the money from that for helping me. Here's the other 47 Chevy. This one's a little bit more complete. The motor's in this one still. And I believe this hood probably came off of that other car just by looking at it, it kind of matches the color of that one. So there's that hood. It's got the grill is inside it. It's got the fender bubbles. It's actually got both sets of fender bubbles off of both cars right here. Uh, there's an extra front fender in this one. There's an extra front fender in the other one as well. Yeah, it's got two sets of these here. Uh, I forget what else is in here. Oh, some filler panels. Just odds and end parts. So I think between the two of them, oh, there's a set of four of these wheels. Actually, there's five of these wheels like that. So that's kind of cool. But I think between the two of these cars, a guy could build a pretty nice one. Like this one's missing all of the chrome trim. But that one over there, like I said earlier, has all of the chrome trim on it. And so I really think a guy could build them. Plus there's a title to this one. I don't have a title to the other one, but I do have a title to this one. So if a guy liked that type of car, there's definitely enough parts there to fix the two of them. Probably have to do a little bit of rust repair, but beyond that, be good to go. So hopefully I can find a hope for those. If not, probably just go ahead and wall art them, pull a few parts off, and then make a crushing video. I just took that bus and shoved it way back over there along the tree row. That way it's out of sight, out of mind. I don't know where it came from, so I don't know if we've even paid for it yet. Just a weird, weird deal on that situation. I don't know what to do. And then last but not least, we've got this beauty right here. 1960 something or other, early 60s Ford F600. Absolutely beautiful condition. Tiny bit of rust there in the, the hood. And the uh, I think it's the passenger side quarter or corner has a little bit of rust. Yeah, this side's solid down here. So it's the passenger side has a tiny bit of rust in it. But look inside this truck. This is an Oklahoma sitting in a barn. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at that seat. Still a nice seat. Nice paint on everything. Even has a headliner in it still. Still has most of the rubber floor mat in it. You can tell it's had a little bit of mice in it, but not, not too bad. You can see the little wear mark right here on the inside and outside where the farmer drove with his arm hanging out the window. It's got a real nice bed on it. Spent most of its life inside the barn, they said. They said they would use it throughout the year, but then when they weren't using it, they would park it in the barn. It's got a 272 or a 292 under the hood. I would guess being a 600, it's probably a 292. But I have seen 272s in these, and they interchange really easy, so probably through the years it could have been swapped. But this truck looks really nice, so I really doubt the engine's been swapped. It looks like they took really good care of it. I've got a little video. Skyler went and picked this one up for me. I didn't have time to run to Oklahoma, and his wife went with him, uh, Billy. So she was nice enough to take a video of him dragging it out of the barn. So I'll go ahead and play that for you real quick.
definitely a cool truck. Yeah, right there, that cab corner's got some rod in it. But not too bad, really. Not for as old as that truck is. This cab and front clip is actually sold. The guy that got all those other cabs and front clips from me, Terry, he went ahead and saw this this morning when he was here, and he fell in love with it, said he has to have it. He doesn't care about the whole truck, though, so he's just going to pull the cab and front clip. This will probably be another one. Once we do that, I'll probably pull that 292 off. It looks like it would run with just a little bit of work. And we'll slap it on a pallet, and we'll try to put it in an auction, maybe. And then the rest of the truck, what I kind of liked about it is, is it's just got those six lug wheels on it. I have a set of six lug uh, non-split rims. They take tubeless tires, so I can take these off here, throw them away, and put some tubeless tires on the back of this. And I think I'm going to go ahead and section the frame. The cylinders and hollow hydraulics look to be in really good condition on this. And the pump and everything, I bet it works, no problem. So I'll section the frame, turn it into a trailer hitch, and you put a little little uh, Predator engine or something like that on there to run the hydraulic pump, and then I can use the bed. I've mentioned it a few times before, I'm really, really wanting a dump trailer that I can use like that. And I don't want to go, I'm not going to use it that often. It's mainly just to haul tree brush and stuff from here out to the landfill. The landfill is just right down the road and around the corner, so it's not that far to go. So I really hate to spend $10,000 to buy a brand new trailer or $12,000, whatever they cost now. I, price goes up every month it seems like on them so I figure I'll take something like that I can buy one of those predator engines for I think 100 150 bucks and buy a trailer hitch and a little bit of time and effort and probably a new set of tires and so I'll have a whole lot less money in it they never did call on this truck here they said they would be here between Tuesday and Friday but they would let me know now you guys know I don't have very good luck with shipping companies so more than likely they're just going to show up and say we're here to get that and I'm gonna be at work and I'm not gonna be able to run over here real quick so uh hopefully they give me some warning but you know, honestly, it's probably just like I said, they're just going to show up and they're just going to have to wait on me. Hopefully they don't get too angry. Here's those two rusty engines. I think a 235 and a 216, I think this is. I think this one's missing a water pump. But uh, other than that, they're pretty well complete engines. So I'm thinking about slapping them on a pallet to see what happens. And if they don't do good, I'll never do it again. I'll just crush them in the future. But it's worth a try, I think. I'm pretty sure this will sell. That's just a cool piece. This truck here is one of the ones she wants the nose off of. I'm just going to leave it sitting here because that's a good spot to cut the nose off. Nothing flammable underneath it. So I'll just leave it sit there and I may bring a few more trucks up in this area to cut them as well. But with that, I am done with this video. I'll probably record one more video throughout the week of me coming out here and processing these old cars and old trucks. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments which was your favorite vehicle from today. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.